Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number two for this week. And uh, by the way, I know I don't normally wear a tie, but uh, I'm heading off to Clinton in a little bit here to MC an event tonight. So uh, that's why I had to dress up. I don't have to do that that much anymore, so I'm almost not used to it. But anyway, uh, the other day, and, and I'm doing this a day early because I know I'm not going to have time tomorrow to do it. All right, so uh, the other day on the previous bonus weather video, we talked about temperature advection and vertical motion. And now we're going to take a look at the other part of that equation, and that's vorticity advection and how that contributes to air going up or down uh, in the atmosphere. So let's go on ahead and get to that, and let's take a spin, if you will. That's what vorticity is all about. All right, so this is what we showed you the other day, and <coughs> the W uh, stands for vertical motion, whether or not the air is going up or down. So that's on the left side of the equation. And then on the right side, the other day, we talked about this term, which is the temperature advection, how the wind is advecting or moving warmer or colder air into or out of a certain location. But today, what we're going to talk about is the other part of the equation, and this is what we call vorticity advection. So let's go on ahead and <coughs> delve into this a little bit here with an example. So in the upper atmosphere, we don't have isobars. We have what we call heights. They're lines of equal heights, iso heights, if you will. And it's how high you have to go up <coughs> to reach a certain pressure in the atmosphere. And the rules are pretty much the same as they are with isobars, that the wind blows basically parallel to these lines. Not exactly, but <coughs> for the most part, it simply flows along. Let's see my cursor here. Flowing along like this, okay? So... We would have a vorticity maximum right here where these lines curve the most, okay? And also the winds are probably stronger down in here than they are up in here. So the shear also contributes to vorticity. So let's say the maximum is right there. And so we're going to put equal lines of vorticity, okay? Iso vorticity lines, if you will. And so let's uh, delve into this here and see exactly what's going on with re regard to advection. So over here, the winds are blowing higher values of vorticity along the flow here, okay? This is a, a you know, relatively low value, then higher, then higher, then highest, and the winds are blowing those higher values along like this. So this is what we call positive vorticity advection. Over on the other side, it's exactly the opposite, <clears throat> where we're advecting negative values or less positive values, let's put it that way, along in the flow, and so this is an area that we call, again, negative vorticity advection. Now, <clears throat> there's another equation I have to bring up here, and that is the change in vorticity with time is equal to the product of the divergence times the vorticity with a minus sign in front of it, okay? And so that's real, real critical that we delve into that equation. So. Let me go back here just a little bit. So supposing you're <clears throat> flying an airplane and you are moving parallel to these black lines, okay? <clears throat> now, as you're flying along, you find this first contour of vorticity, which is relatively low, and then you keep flying along and you get to a higher value and a higher value until you max out down around in here. So the change in vorticity with respect to time as you're flying along is positive, okay? You're gaining vorticity as you move along in the flow. So that, if this side of the equation is positive, that means this side needs to be positive. Well, we know the vorticity is positive already, <coughs> and we had a minus sign here, so the only way we can make that side of the equation positive is to make the D negative. So if you have negative divergence, that is the equivalent of convergence. So we have convergence aloft, we have divergence at the surface, and I'll get out of the way here, so the air sinks. So you have air coming together at the top of the atmosphere, sinking, and then spreading out at the bottom, okay? And that's usually associated with <coughs> fair weather, clear skies, you know, not a whole lot going on. Now, let's go to the other side here, and as you continue to fly your airplane along, <coughs> now your vorticity values are decreasing as you fly your plane. And so now dV dt is negative, which means this side of the equation has to be negative. Well, we've already got a minus sign, and we know this is positive, so the divergence has to be positive, okay? And so now we've got divergence aloft, 
that means convergence at the surface and the air rises. So the air is coming together at the ground, going up, and then spreading out at the top. Okay, And that's usually associated with you know, clouds, precipitation, that type of thing. So when you're in positive vorticity advection, that leads to upward motion. Negative vorticity advection tends to lead to sinking motion. One last thing, <coughs> going back to this equation. You see this little thing right here? <laughs> the change in whatever's ahead of it, which is this, the vorticity advection, with pressure as you go up through the atmosphere. The vorticity advection has to be increasing with height in order for this term to be positive or to lead to upward motion. So in the fall, winter, and spring, that's usually not an issue because the winds generally get stronger as you go up through the atmosphere, meaning the vorticity advection, positive or negative, is getting stronger as you go up through the atmosphere. And so that condition is usually satisfied. But in the summer, when the winds are many, many times weak throughout the entire depth of the atmosphere, then you don't always have increasing vorticity advection with height. So you may be in positive vorticity advection at some level in the upper atmosphere, but it doesn't mean anything because the advection at that level isn't any different than it is at any other level above or below it, okay? So <clears throat> that's sort of a key term there. And again, during the fall, winter, and spring, it's usually not a big deal uh, to, uh, you know, uh, satisfy that requirement. Okay, that is it for today. I hope again 10% of that made sense to you. Uh, we will have another bonus weather video on the normal day next week on Tuesday, and at least that's the way I'm planning it right now. In the meantime, you have a wonderful rest of your Thursday, and I'll have a, a sh an abbreviated daily update coming up in just a little bit. So we'll see you again later today and again tomorrow. <laughs> Take care, everybody. See you later.